Welcome to the first grade mathematics Florida standards. This presentation will give you general information about the mathematics Florida standards as well as specific information about first grade standards. This publication was made possible by a grant from Carnegie Corporation of New York. The statements made and views expressed are solely the responsibility of the author. Why have new math standards? New standards should help our kids dig deeper so they can explain a concept or how they got to an answer and develop their potential to think more critically and creatively. Any new standards should reflect best practices of schools, states, and countries around the world because our kids deserve the best education we can give them. In addition, the point of setting standards for what children should know at the end of each year is so we know when kids are ready to move to the next level or are falling behind so we can help them catch up rather than give up. Just as every patient deserves a doctor whose knowledge and technology is up to date, every child deserves an education that's current and teaches them technologies and the ability to learn new ones they'll need to succeed. Educational standards in America need to match or exceed the standards for the best performing countries in the world. The Mathematics Florida Standards were adopted in 2014. These standards were modified so that all students have an equal access to education regardless of their zip code. They are aligned with college and work expectations. They are clear, understandable, and consistent. They include rigorous content and application of knowledge through higher order skills. They build on strengths and lessons of current state standards. They are informed by other top performing countries so that all students are prepared to succeed in a global economy and society. And they are evidence-based. Education should be about standards, not standardized tests. Those standards should set the bar high but be similar enough across schools so if your family takes a job across the country, is in the military and moves around, or just buys a home in a neighboring district, your child isn't either bored or disadvantaged because they don't know what's going on. That's why the states work together to develop standards for what kids ought to know by the end of each year, learning from teachers, parents, and employers, but also from the best performing schools, states, and countries, so our kids would be able to compete in a global world. Standards don't tell any state, school, or teacher how to teach or what curriculum to use. That way, teachers can continue to use their knowledge and expertise and innovations in their classrooms, and when something works, they can share it not just with teachers down the hall, but all over the country online. It's time to return to the days when American students got the best education in the world, because when they graduate from high school, technical school, or college, that is who they will be competing with for jobs. You shouldn't be teaching or testing students on their skills for rote memorization because knowledge is changing so quickly that tomorrow's workers will need to anticipate what is coming next and be able to transfer their skills to meet new challenges. Kids need to learn how to use their knowledge to think carefully, critically, and creatively to solve new problems and new dilemmas. And if that's what we're teaching, that is what we ought to be testing to make sure we are succeeding and to help kids, schools, and districts that are struggling. The standards for mathematical practice are the backbone for building understanding in mathematics. These standards are consistent throughout all grade levels, K to 12. As your child progresses through the grades, they will refine these mathematical behaviors. The bolded print identifies the skill that your child is using as they learn their grade level standards. The content standards are broken up into the following domains for each grade level. Notice that the domain counting and cardinality is only found in kindergarten. Operations and algebraic thinking, numbers and operations in base 10, measurement and data, and geometry are consistent across all grade levels K to 5. In third grade, the domain numbers and operations fractions is introduced. Today, the key to success, whether you're a mechanic called in to fix something you've never seen before, or a member of the medical profession, is being able to take information that you have and transfer it to a new situation. The standards for mathematical practice provide a solid foundation that helps to anchor your child's learning of the mathematics. 
The content standards change each year as students progress through the grade levels, which allows for continual growth and development of mathematicians. Education needs to give our kids core knowledge and an ability to apply that knowledge in real world settings. This chart illustrates this idea. Listed in each grade level are the critical areas that will be addressed during the school year. This provides a global overview of the critical content taught in each grade level K to 5. In first grade, your child will learn important addition and subtraction strategies, such as counting on and back, making a 10, doubles, and near doubles. These strategies will be applied to greater numbers and mental math strategies as they get older. In first grade, your child will also learn that subtraction is a missing add-in problem. He or she will also add up to three add-ins and solve word problems within 20. For example, Joey has nine stickers, Tyler has 13 stickers. How many more stickers does Tyler have than Joey? During addition and subtraction in first grade, he or she will also add two digit numbers to one digit numbers. For example, 56 plus eight. Two digit numbers to a multiple of 10. For example, 48 plus 20 and subtract multiples of 10 from multiples of 10. For example, 60 minus 20. Place value in first grade. In first grade, your child will learn that two digit numbers are made up of tens and ones. For example, the number 56 can be represented with base 10 language, five tens and six ones. A pictorial representation, five rods and six unit cubes, or an expanded form, 50 plus 6. He or she will also learn to flexibly represent two-digit numbers. For example, the number 37 can be represented with 37 ones, three tens and seven ones, two tens and 17 ones, and also one ten and 27 ones. Geometry measurement and data in first grade. In first grade, your child will measure objects to the nearest inch. He or she will also learn to order three objects by length. More geometry measurement and data in first grade. Your first grader will learn to identify defining attributes of polygons. For example, this triangle's defining attributes are that it has three sides and three vertices. The fact that it is the color blue is a non-defining attribute of this polygon. Your child will also learn to compose two-dimensional and three-dimensional shapes. For example, your child will be able to identify that this rectangle is made up of two triangles. Geometry, measurement, and data in first grade. Your child will be able to identify halves, fourths, and quarters. For example, your child should be able to identify that this circle is cut into halves, two equal pieces. Your child will also learn to tell time to the hour and half hour. During geometry measurement and data in first grade, your child will also learn to organize, understand, and represent data in up to three categories using tally charts, picture graphs, and bar graphs. Your child will also learn to identify and combine values of money. The whole point of setting standards for what children ought to know at the end of each year is so we know when kids have met those standards and are ready to move on, and so we can flag problems early so kids don't fall further behind each year and eventually give up. With that being said, it is important to remember that every child develops at his or her own pace. It is important to stay in contact with your child's teacher to further support their understanding of mathematics. In other words, you are the biggest advocate for your child. This publication was made possible by a grant from Carnegie Corporation of New York. The statements made and views expressed are solely the responsibility of the author.